Welcome back to another Minecraft update video. It is Snapshot 20 W12A and in this one we've got lots of changes, a new mysterious block below me, a new building material behind me. Lots to talk about but first of all we're actually going to talk about two really massive and significant changes to the game that are going to nerf some overpowered farms. So here in the change log, it says when fishing, treasure loot can now only be obtained by fishing in open waters. This means that AFK fishing farms are going to be nerfed. So in the change log, there is this new parameter called in open water. It says matches whether the fishing location is open water fishing or not. A fishing location is considered to be open water if there are no blocks above water and no solid underwater blocks around all water blocks are source blocks and there are no bubble columns so as you can see the presence of solid blocks above the water here and a lack of more water source blocks around here would invalidate this design and stop you from getting decent loot from the afk fisher so this farm design itself kind of does work because you can still get fish it's only treasure loot that you're not going to be able to get from this type of farm anymore so if you want it as a food source and you want to get lots of fish you can technically still use it for that. Now so you can understand exactly why, this is inside of the game itself and fishing actually has three different loot tables. So when you open the fishing loot table it refers to those and you'll see that the treasure one right here now requires in open water to be true. So that means you have to be fishing this way to get treasure. I've got two thoughts on this change. Let's face it, being able to build a small contraption like this and then get crazy enchanted books is just blatantly overpowered and not balanced for the game i think it's a great decision to change this the other thing is that players are going to figure out what these parameters are to meet that predicate to get treasure from fishing and then they'll probably find some sort of way to engineer it so that you can afk fish farm again but hopefully not i don't know what the specifics are but i think this is a change in the right direction from moyang Okay, what's the second big change? Well, I need you to cast your mind back to Hermitcraft Season 6 where we built an XP shop that stored the XP enough to repair your tools and armor inside of furnaces. And this was all done thanks to a ridiculously overpowered farm that we will see just behind these walls. It is the Zero Tick Farm. There is an exploit that causes cactus, chorus fruit, sugarcane, bamboo to grow faster than it reasonably should do and so in this update these farms have been nerfed. So it's very noisy uh, but as you'll see the bamboo just pops off instead of causing it to grow extra fast that's really good to see. And the cactus farm over here has suffered a similar fate although one just clipped over there and grew you can see it's not forcing it to grow so this has well and truly been fixed. Now, I think Mojang have made the right decision here to remove it from the game. It's clearly a bug that's been exploited. It's not intuitive to a new player. You have to build a weird redstone contraption to take advantage of it. And let's face it, you know, it's ridiculously overpowered. So again, I think another great change from Mojang. With that out of the way, let's get to our new blocks. We now have a use for crying obsidian, and that is to create the respawn anchor. Let's check out the recipe first of all. You can see six blocks of crying obsidian, three blocks of glowstone, and you'll need more glowstone blocks to interact with this and take full use of its features, which we'll get to in just a second. We also got polished basalt, and this can be created from basalt if you smelt it inside of a furnace. So you gather your basalt from the nether, smelt it up, and you get this new really nice polished basalt. It's one of those directional blocks that you can place in different directions and you've got the two different textures there to work with now as for this respawn anchor don't use it in the overworld okay <laughs> it's for the never okay we're going to see this in action now and i've cranked up the volume because this block makes really cool sound effects but that's when you actually put glowstone inside of it which is the currency to use it and it's a respawn anchor so it allows you to respawn inside of the never that is a beautiful sound. <laughs> and I love the ghostly voice that comes in just after it. And another thing you might notice, it gets brighter each time you add glowstone to it. So it can be used as a light source. 
It generates particle effects. I love everything about this. This is an amazing block. Now, if I right click on it, I will then set my respawn point and it will make that sound. I can actually spam that, I guess. Click over and over again. And then when I die, I will respawn in the nether, which was never possible before, right? It also makes that sound. So let's hear it again. Cool. And then, you know, now that it's been charged down, I can charge it back up. But you can't do more than four charges. Now I can't right click on it with a glowstone. So I've killed myself a bunch of times and we're going to do it one more now. And then we've run out. So this thing is then deactivated. I think I can still right click on it. No, it doesn't let you set your respawn point. But if I kill myself now, I will simply default to the overworld. So this thing interacts with redstone. If you use a comparator, it'll give you a signal strength of three, then seven, then 11, then 15. And unfortunately, you can't use this with a dispenser. If I go and power it, it just ejects the block. So you can't use the comparator to create like an automatic refilling system. The light level the block emits is 2, then 6, then 10, and finally 14. It is also not movable by a piston in any of its forms. And because of these changes, you can now use the spawn point command in any dimension. As you can see there, it's compatible with the nether. So now when I kill myself, we will respawn right here in the nether. And if you're wondering what happens when you use it in this dimension... <laughs> It blows up. I'm loving this block. I think it's a wonderful addition and it got me thinking PvP minigame in the nether in survival. You could use this as like a, a respawn counter for players. You got five lives and then your time is up. So let's get on to more of the changes in this update. You can now use bone mill on your nylium blocks. As you can see you can use this to get the fungus, the nether sprouts and the warped roots. And if I just put some down over here, you can get the equivalent. Notice how it grows across, though. That's uh, an interesting observation to make right there. And, of course, this works with dispensers. So you can use this to automate the process and farm all these materials and get yourself lots of uh, fungus. So the hoe is being taken seriously as a tool now, with more and more blocks being added to it with every snapshot. I can't actually place wet sponge here in the nether because that dries it out. But it is now the default tool for both types of sponge. There is also a big change to the nether gold ore which generates in the nether. It can now actually be mined with any type of pick. So you can see here that I'm using the wooden. Stone will obviously mine it a little bit faster. And instead of getting ingots you actually just get a couple of golden nuggets. And how many did we mine there? Four. So what's that like? An average of between three and four. So I've looked it up, it's actually between 2 and 6 gold nuggets, and you can use Fortune 3 on it as well. You can also still silk touch the blocks, and as you can see here, you can still smelt the nether gold ore, although you would need silk touch to do it this way around. But then I guess it gives you a way to get gold without using a furnace, as you can mine the stuff and get some nuggets. And with this change, piglins are now attracted to nether gold ore, which they weren't in the previous snapshot. Next up we have some good sounding changes to bees and mob AI in general. Here's a bug I've seen reported in the past where mobs have a tendency to wander in a specific direction more than other ones. This cow happens to be going in the opposite direction. Now that applies to most mobs and it is north and apparently for bees it is northwest. So if you've ever clustered a bunch of mobs in an area together and notice they head over to one direction, Hopefully you'll see less of that over time. Now it's also listed that the bee had a little animation for when it's gathering pollen. I'm not sure if that's the bee just spinning around on the flower, but I don't really notice anything different here, despite this being reported. The big change now though that should help with performance of the game in your world is that bees aren't going to go further than around 22 blocks away from their beehive. So once this bee considers this bee nest a home, then it's not going to go further than roughly where the glass block is here before turning back to the bee's nest. Let's see if that actually happens though. Uh, you've gone off the edge, straight down, and you're not going any further than that. <laughs> and now you're back up here. It's always hard to know exactly how these changes are going to affect game performance, but it's good to see that Mojang are aware that the bees can kind of have performance issues, and so hopefully these changes will fix a few of those.
Oh, and there was also a small technical change to the B. It wasn't working with the silent tag. So you can give any entity the silent tag and it will stop producing sounds. That wasn't working with the Bs though, so they just kept buzzing. And that's been fixed in this snapshot. Next up, some changes to the soul speed enchantment that was added in the last snapshot. Now, erroneously, you could actually get these from dungeon chests. They would generate inside of them, which wasn't supposed to be the case. That's been taken care of. Also, when you use this in creative mode, it's no longer going to drain the durability. And when your durability went all the way down to zero, it didn't actually break the boots and you could continue using the enchantment. So all of those things have been changed. And one of the things you might have seen going around in the Minecraft community was the ability to combine these with other enchantments and tricks, for example, using Depth Strider and probably things like Dolphin's Grace and Speed might affect as well, but this is supposed to have been nerfed now. And as you can see, we're kind of traveling at a reasonable speed now, but this I still think is a really cool way to travel. There is also a tag inside of the game's data that allows you to apply this enchantment to any block. So you could actually attach it to Grass Block or other ones, and that will of course be very useful for mini games. And if you turn your subtitles on, you'll see it says Soul Escapes. So remember those particle effects? Those are souls escaping, according to the subtitles. If you didn't know, parrots have the ability to imitate hostile mobs that are nearby. And according to the changelog, this will happen less often. And there was also a bug that caused them to imitate those sounds when you're playing on Peaceful. And that will no longer happen. And then there's also this, new mood detection algorithm for cave sounds. I guess that means they've just found a new way to set off those sounds that you hear when you're out and about caving. Hoglins will now be included in the breeding advancement known as 2x2 where you have to breed all of the animals. And there was this annoying bug that had been in the game for some time where mycelium and grass wouldn't turn back to dirt underwater. Which is something that they are supposed to do and it's been stuck like that for a couple of updates. And I'm happy to report it's fixed in this one. And the last of the bugs I want to report on for today is that the game would forget if you had your recipe book open or closed after you die. So now when you die and you go back to a crafting bench, it will remember if you had the book open or closed. Now there were a lot of minor bug fixes in this update. If you want to see them all, there will be a link to the changelog in the description box below. I covered what I thought were the most relevant ones and that then brings us to the end of this video. If you've enjoyed it, be sure to leave a like. Thank you as always for your support and if you're looking for something to watch, why not check out the latest episode of Hermitcraft. Link on your screen and all of that good stuff. Anyway, thank you for watching. I'll see you soon. Bye bye.